Hi, this is Vijay. Let me come directly to the point. When it comes to GMAT preparation, a good number of test aspirants have some hiccups about how to prepare for the critical reasoning. Uh, for the sentence correction, uh, if you were to look at the uh, question types, uh, th there, are, there are chances that you uh, come across concept analysis in some of the GMAT books. You could refer to the grammar books, you could refer to any uh, English usage book to get uh, ideas about how to construct sentences correctly, what are those error types and what is standard written English. Now this isn't available for the critical reasoning. Uh, if you were to look at the sources that the JMAT test takers refer to, uh, primary source of course is the official guide. I mean, there is uh, unlikely to be there someone who is preparing for the GMAT and doesn't refer to the critical uh, reasoning of the official guide. Now, the official guide gives you ample uh, questions to practice on. Now, there is a belief, uh, a widespread belief among test takers that in the GMAT critical reasoning, what you can do as a test aspirant is to simply work on a lot of questions. we have some uh, basic understanding about the logic what sort of basic logic is required and how far of the information that we gather from logic books is appropriate these are some of the questions that maybe we'll take a look at together now um, when we prepare for the critical reasoning questions official guide questions are very important in, in that they serve as adequate practice material but it is important for us to have some hold on what the basic logic behind those questions are. Now, I would suggest that you, you need to have a, a certain level of understanding about how arguments are formed. A critical reasoning question comprises a paragraph, which is an argument. An argument is formed by putting together a set of statements. Now, those statements in logic are termed premises and conclusion. Now the conclusion is something that's the main point that the speaker wants you to believe. And to support the conclusion, he would give you premises. They could be survey reports, they could be any observation that is made, they could be any uh, explanations or reason that he could. There are a set of statements in every argument, they are the premises. And the main point of the conclusion is that we derive out of it. Now, a structure of an argument would mean, how are the premises and the conclusion presented? 
Now the premises need not be the first set of statements. You can also have an argument wherein the conclusion is the last statement and the first set of statements are the premises or the reverse way. That means you would start with a set of premises and then arrive at the conclusion. Now the reverse way would mean you could have the conclusion first and followed by the premises. Either way an argument is an argument. There could be a third structure in which the conclusion is presented somewhere in the middle of the paragraph. You can have a set of uh, premises in the beginning and you can have additional premises after the conclusion is stated. Now uh, you must be knowing or if you haven't come across here is the information on what is the type of logic. Now we have uh, two different types of logic called inductive and deductive. I'm sure you are familiar with this terminology. Now you could take a look at what the illustration that I have given here. An inductive logic is one wherein you begin with a specific case. For instance here we are referring to rose is a plant, rose is green, therefore all plants are green. A classic case of inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning means you start with specific instances and arrive at a generalization. Of course one look you know this argument is weak. And so is all inductive reasoning. All inductive reasoning arguments are weak. Now, scientific information that we use here, all scientific theories are based on induction. But very unlike the example that I have given here, in scientific research we have more examples, more instances, more observations and therefore the conclusion becomes stronger. But we cannot consider the conclusion to be unquestionable. Alright? Now, the same logic of inductive logic the way you would see in the GMAT is what is given as an example here. Now look at the paragraph. Uh, if you were to study the paragraph, you would see that the first statement, private ownership of services traditionally considered to be the responsibility of the government will typically improve those services. That means, if you put services of uh, businesses under private ownership, they would be improving, unlike if they are under the government. Now, this conclusion, the general statement, the claim that the speaker is making is supported by an example. The turnpike system in the United States of the 19th century demonstrates the truth of this principle. The system which had previously been controlled by the government became more reliable when it was taken over by private organizations. Now, don't you see a similarity between the example that I have given above and this GMAT argument? Yes, you can see. There is one example to support the generalization. Alright. Now the question, take a look at the question which of the following describes a flaw in the author's argument above. Now every inductive reasoning is flawed. From one example of a turnpike system that you are talking about, can we generalize and say that therefore private ownership would make services better off if it is put under private ownership unlike it is the responsibility of the government. Now, being prepared for a critical reasoning, a person who realizes that the argument here is an example, therefore a conclusion, and naturally he expects that a flaw would be that one example is not sufficient to arrive at the generalization. That means the speaker makes a hasty generalization. That is exactly the answer here. Now take a look at which option out of the five questions this limited nature of the premises and that is what D does. The author generalizes from a sample not representative enough to establish the conclusion. Now this is a, a common lo logical error or fallacy for every argument derived from exemplar logic. Now the other statements appealing to the person of authority, opposing view, um, attributes very different meanings to the same word are merely serving as options here and so the other defense what he perceives etc is not the questioning on the line of reasoning. So the line of reasoning is here exemplar is a type of inductive logic. Now the opposing uh, type of argument here is deductive. Now 